Hello everybody, Nancy Alfaro here with Whip of Wisdom Ministries and today I bring a word that is called when the miracle doesn't happen. When the miracle doesn't happen and today I come to speak to those that have been asking God for something that they don't see it coming. The desire for what you have wanted the most, it seems to have no work and you find yourself frustrated, maybe discouraged, Maybe your faith is wavering because you don't see the hand of God moving in your favor. And you're probably asking God, when, God, when my miracle is going to happen and you are not seeing it. And today I want to go through a story in the Bible um, to stir up your faith and uh, show you through the passages on the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 about a story that I'm going to read with you uh, in how God uses the faith of a woman to make a miracle happen for her. So uh, we're going to, to give you a little bit of context of the story that I'm going to uh, you know, tell you about is the story of Hannah. Hannah wanted a child and Hannah couldn't conceive. She couldn't have any children. And uh, you see here in a minute uh, how that was her prayer, that she wanted a son, that she wanted to give her husband children, and she couldn't. And she was getting frustrated. She was getting sad. And how God uses all of that to bring this beautiful miracle to her life. And today I want to speak to you that probably are feeling just what Hannah felt. And um, let's go review it together. So let's go to 1 Samuel. And, um, and uh, I'm going to start reading on chapter 6. And it says, So Penina will taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year, it was the same. Penina will taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle each time, and Hannah will be reduced to tears and will not even eat. So let me let me show you here a minute what's happening with Hannah. So she wanted to give her husband children. Her husband's name was Elkanah. And, uh, you know, she couldn't bear children. And there was another wife. Uh, they kind of has the name was Penina or Penina, and sorry about the pronunciation, uh, but Penina um, could have, she had children. And ha Hannah wanted to give so bad a kind of children, but she couldn't. And year after year, when they were going to the temple, Hannah would pray to God, God, give me children, give me children. And this Penina, this other woman, will make fun of her, will taunt her, will humiliate her. It will say, look, you cannot have any children. And, you know, it, the, the pain that Hannah was feeling, it says that she wouldn't even eat. She would live in tears all the time. So she was going to the temple. She was praying and she wouldn't see the miracle happen. She wouldn't see it. Year after year, says the scripture, that she will go into the tabernacle and this kept repeating over and over again. Then on verse 8, it says, why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah will ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having 10 sons? And beloved, I don't know about you, but there's things in your heart that you want it to happen. And sometimes you find people to tell you, well, if you cannot have that, don't you see you have all these other blessings, but inside your heart, you know, like Hannah, she wanted the children. It's not that she didn't want Alcana. If, if not, she wanted to have a son and that was her deepest prayer was that. And maybe you have a prayer that you have been waiting on God for years and you don't see it. You don't see the miracle happening. 
And other people maybe around you with the best intentions are telling you, abort the dream, abort the prayer. Don't you have other children? Don't you have a good job? Don't you have a good husband? Uh, don't you see all the other blessings? But inside of you, you are like, but God, you know what I need. So I want to speak to you tonight, to you that are feeling like your dream has been forgotten, or maybe you feel like God is not hearing your prayer because you don't see the answer of it. And then uh, if we keep reading on, on verse nine, it says, once after the sa a sacrificial me meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli, the priest, was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. And we see, right, that, again, Hannah's greatest desire was to give Elkanah children. She would come to pray. She would have a penina that would mock her. And imagine the burden of that. And I, I wonder how many times the enemy have used somebody close to you, maybe somebody like Penina coming to you, mocking you, or the enemy is, you know, speaking to your ear and saying, the miracle is not coming. God is not going to heal you. You are not going to have a happy marriage. You are not going to have that promotion. You will never see the hand of God showing, you know, mocking you and taunting you. And, you know, we rebuke the spirit of Penina that may be coming to you and in, in doing this to you to frustrate you. Now, let's keep reading on. In 1 Samuel 1, 10 through 17, then it says, Hannah was deep in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. O oh Lord of heaven armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he being dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. So what happened? Hannah goes to the temple and she makes a vow with, with the Lord. And she says, God, if you give me the son, I will give it back to you. You know, but, and then we keep reading right on verse 12. It says, as she was praying to the Lord, Eli, watch her. It says, seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound, he thought she has been drinking. He says, must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I'm very discouraged. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli say, go in peace. May the son of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. My beloved, I'm here to remind you that there is a time that God has for whatever you're asking for. There are prayers that are taking time to be fulfilled. And we see in here, uh, you know, the, the, the rabbis explain that the reason why Elkanah had another wife was because she was already married for 10 years without having children. And that tradition will say that if you couldn't bear children after 10 years, you could get married and get, get a second wife. So that way you can multiply. So having children was seen as a blessing from God. And not having children was seen as a curse. So now you understand that Hannah was praying, the Bible says, year after year. And we know by the tradition, by the culture, at least 10 years. And it says that um, Penina had more children. So it was definitely more than 10 years that she was praying every year, praying, 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 not seeing the miracle happening, right? But something happened. And I'm going to show you here during this prayer of Hannah. What did Hannah do 
The one thing that Hannah did is she took the problem and she brought it to God. But something happened on this prayer. And I'm going to show you in a second. During this prayer, she was to the point that they thought she was drunk. I think she had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Because they said there was no, and this is me just thinking about, right? She's there and she's like, you know, there's no sound coming out. But she's to the point that she had given her heart out to the Lord. It says, you know, I'm being, I'm, I'm naked in front of God. I have been crying my, my eyes out. It's an, a moment where you know this was not just a simple prayer, but a prayer of desperation that Hannah had, a prayer of leaving it all out, God, and not moving from here until you do something for me. And you see that powerful prayer that she does with all her heart. She was fully committed to what she was praying, to the point that she bowed to God and he said, I'm going to give, you give me a son, I'll give, give him back to you. You know, this is a woman with a purpose. This is a woman that knows how to enter in the prayer room. This is a woman that knows how to knock in heaven's door. This is a, a, a woman that knows how to plead with God and ask God for what her faith, her faith was stir up and say, God, you are the only one that can give me what I don't have. Now, we see in 1 Samuel 1, 5, it says, And though he loved Hannah, he will give her only one, cho one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. Other versions, it says that, that God closed her womb. He didn't allow her to bear children. Now, when you read that verse, you understand that the reason why Hannah was not having children is because God didn't allow her to have children. But you also see, and I'm here to give you hope, that when God shuts a door, there's something happened. There is a miracle that is getting created. And I have no doubt that Samuel was um, born right at the time where he needed to for a special purpose. He needed to be born at a precise moment in history. And sometimes closed doors are part of that perfect plan that God has for you. He needed to be in the right place at the right time with the right parents. And that took time because there was a purpose to be fulfilled. So beloved, when you don't see that miracle happen, I want you to think of this story of Hannah. And to think how her faith aligned with God's timing. And now we keep reading the story. 1 Samuel 120. It says, and in due time, she gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel. For she said, I asked the Lord for him. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that in due time, God is going to open the door for you. That thing that you have been asking for, that it looks like it's been one year, two years, three years, 10 years, 17 years, and you are not seeing the miracle yet. I'm here to remind you that in due time, it says she gave birth. Beloved, I'm convinced she gave birth the minute that she left that prayer room. The minute she left that prayer room, she conceived in her womb. And, I, and because God's timing is perfect. Now, how we know that? I'm going to take, take you to 1 Samuel 111. And it says, and she made this vow, O Lord of heaven. And it says, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I'll give, give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire life as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord. His hair will never be cut. Beloved, Hannah believed with all her heart. When she said that prayer, she believed it. And we'll see that in 1 Samuel 17, 18. It says, when Eli says, in that case, because it says, are you drunk and all this? He said, in that case, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you the request you have asked of him. And she says, oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again 
and she was no longer sad. That's your sign she believed what she prayed for. It says the woman was in tears. Something happened on that prayer. This time around, it was different. See, every time she went back, she went back crying and she wouldn't eat. But this time, after she prayed, after she put her soul out there, she prayed with all her heart, something happened. The atmosphere transformed to the point that she left that prayer room saying, I got it. I got it. I got my baby. I got it. She, why? She was no longer sad and she went to eat. Two signs that completely the atmosphere changed. She put faith. She put her heart out there and she started trusting God at that minute. So Hannah was grateful. If we keep reading, she kept her vow. In 1 Samuel 125 through 28, it said, After sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked. I am the very woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he has granted me my request. Now I'm giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life, and they worship the Lord there. Beloved, not only she believed God for the miracle, but she also went back to God to thank God for it, and she also did her part of the deal. And it was to give Samuel back to God. And that's what she did. Beloved, you cannot forget what you have been asking God for when God gives it to you. Don't forget. Don't be looking at the gift and forget the hand that gave it to you. Many people will be, I want this, Lord. I wanted this. And the minute that God gives it to you, then you forget about God and you turn your back. Remember right now, the man that God healed and only one came back out of the 10 that he healed that day? We cannot forget about the things that we're asking God to do for us. And we need to be faithful to him the same way that he's been faithful to us. We see on 1 Samuel 2, verses 1 and 2, he says, Then Hannah prayed, says Hannah prayer of praise. And he says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemies. I rejoice because you rescue me. No one is holy like you, like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Beloved Hannah's history changed. Her miracle, when it came, it changed her identity. She was no longer being seen by Penina like the woman that couldn't have any children. God changed her identity. Now she was a mother, but not only a mother. Now she had a son fully dedicated to God. See, that thing that you're praying for, you need to give it back to God. You cannot forget that the reason is always him, is always God. So beloved, we can see how God took the pain of this woman, the sadness, the rejection. And he gave her the most beautiful gift, his son Samuel. God has something beautiful for you. You have not seen it yet. But you will see it. You will see that God will fulfill his promise. Do not get discouraged and wait on God. He never fails his timing is always perfect. So beloved, I challenge you today that if you are in that crossroad moment, in that moment where you're feeling like your faith have been wavering, if you're feeling like my miracle will never happen, you're giving up, I encourage you today to get into that prayer room, to give it all to God, put it in God's feet, but believe that God is going to do it. Believe that God already have said done. You need to be able to leave from that prayer room with the complete knowledge, acceptance, expectation that God has done it. So I invite you tonight to go into your prayer room. Go give it all to God. 
This is not going to be done in your own timing. God has a plan. The closed doors that you're seeing have a purpose. Something God is doing, even if you cannot see it. God is preparing something that is way better than what you have been asking for, but the timing got to be just right. Trust God. Trust his timing. He's forever faithful. Whatever he said he will do, he is going to do it. So don't lose hope, beloved. And I hope that you can share this message with others. I invite you to subscribe to my channel in YouTube. Whip of Wisdom, 30 Minutes with God. This is not about me, but it's about telling others about that loving God that you and I serve. Would you share with others the message? Find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. And go tell others. Go preach. Go tell others. Share with others the good, no the good news of Christ. Thank you for being with me tonight. God bless you all. And we'll see you next week. Many blessings.